You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I am Jim, your technologically brilliant host, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco. It's Rocco. And They're not technologically brilliant host, but that's okay. We keep him around anyway I'm because just he's brilliant. fun to torture. I'm <laughs> just, just, just plain brilliant. Just plain brilliant. That's me. And yeah. delusional. Yeah, whatever works for you. It's all good. <laughs> so look, I put it like this, right? I tell everybody you're the most brilliant person sitting in your office right now, hands down. So, of course, you're the only person sitting in your office right now, but you know, that's a whole other story. All right. <laughs> it still isn't going to get you out of the engineering joke of the week. All right. You ready to go, Rocco? Ready. Okay. So here's a good question for you. When does... Th- see, I like this one. This one's funny, but it's mean. So I'm apologizing in advance, but I did. this did make me laugh. When does someone decide to become an engineer? What? It's when they realize they do not have the charisma, charisma to be an undertaker. Huh? <laughs> That's just awful. That's such a mean <laughs> joke, but it did make me laugh. So I like that. <laughs> I'm not a nice person, folks. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So what are we doing today? Oh, I know what we're doing today. So today we're, we're doing another one of our recurring episodes of... Bluebeam features you need in your life, right? And that's because almost all of us uh, use Bluebeam Review on a daily basis. Um, I know that you know Zentech. We we do a ton of of our consulting work with you know folks on on configuring Bluebeam to their needs, right? So you know we like to share our thoughts on the coolest tools uh, you know that people need to know about and that they often just don't. Um, and today I want to talk about the concept of PDF packages. Um, now, look, don't worry if you're not sure what those are, uh, because I am always surprised at how few people who work all the time with Bluebeam actually know about PDF packages. It's, it's, it's one of those functions that, you know, whenever I show it to somebody, they gasp and they're like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I could have used that yesterday. And holy Rocco, 1984 call. They want their Valley Girl back. What was that? <laughs> who brought that? That was weird. All right. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. As if. Gag me with a spoon. Uh, wow. Okay, getting back on topic. <laughs> I'm just entertaining myself here today. All right, so look, folks, the, you know, the, the, the concept of a PDF package, um, it, it's basically building an entire project's folder and file structure into a single PDF that you can either email or you can share with people via you know links or via cloud, whatever. Um, so you think of a PDF package as a much more intelligent version of a table of contents for your entire project kind of bundled together with a zip file, right? To contain all the data for that job. It's kind of like both of those in one, okay? Uh, so, so look, Rack, oh, I know you're on a tech side, right? I know PDF packages aren't something that you work with a lot, uh, but how many of, of our clients that you talk to are, are just in general looking for ways to better organize and share, you know, project files and data more effectively? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a big part of what we do every day, right? Is helping people get more organized and improve on their communication. So this this is this is right on the money, you know, with with this functionality, definitely a huge a huge uh, huge benefit and See? huge time saver. It's the kind of thing that would be brought to the fore by someone who's technologically brilliant. I'm just saying. Oh, God. So, <laughs> all right. So all right, let's talk a little bit about uh, PDF packages, right? So, you know, you can start a, a new PDF package at any time, right? From the blue beam, you just go up to the file drop down, go to file, create PDF package right off the fly out menu. So very easy to get to. Um, and what this does is it creates a special kind of PDF, right? That is meant to act as a container for all of the files and folders on your job, right? And when you open up a new PDF package, at the very top of that page, the PDF that it creates, you're going to see three options, add files, add folder, and new folder. 
Um, and basically, these are going to act as the same type of interfaces that you've seen on pretty much any type of cloud-based storage system or construction management software. Uh, you're you're going to build or load folders, right? Then you're going to browse for files to add into those folders. Um, the only real difference is that instead of those files and folders going, you know, into the cloud, they're actually being copied into a single PDF file. And, and I get that sounds weird, right? I know it does, uh, but it is actually a remarkably effective way to centralize and share project structures with people outside your office who may not have, you know, access to your servers or to your cloud environment. Um, the big thing I'm going to tell you guys that you're going to want to keep in mind here is that we are not with this PDF packages. We're not creating, you know, links to where those files reside, right? When they're inside the PDF package, we're actually attaching and embedding the files into that PDF, right? So file size can be a concern, right? Particularly if you're planning on trying to email the PDF package. Um, the good thing here, is that when you do this, Bluebeam is going to automatically compress all the data that you put into the file to make it as small as possible. And that's why, you know, like I said earlier, I tell people, think of the PDF package as a zip file that has a PDF extension, right? Because that's really effectively, that's what it is. All the data is instantly compressed and it's ready to be sent or shared, you know, with anyone while still maintaining the full folder structure of the project inside that PDF file. Um, so, so Rocco, how important is it, right, to, to our clients to be able to, you know, share out data, right, with, you know, subcontractors or owners or, or even the general public, I guess, uh, you, without having to worry about, you know, the security issues of, you know, giving them access to their internal servers and getting IT involved and, and all of those extensive processes? Yeah, well, you want, you know, you want a quick and, and, and easy process and you don't want a process going to that's going to involve that's going to involve you know emailing 20 files right i mean cuz you know something's going to go lost in that process so having one condensed file it it just it makes life easier and you know you definitely don't want to get it involved i mean that's always a production we all know at what whatever level you get them involved so uh, it, yeah it's it comes up a lot and, and it only makes sense. Yeah, try, trying to keep things as simple as you can and not having to get, you know, VPN access and security rights and licenses and things for people access, you know, CALs for the server. You, you, <laughs> sometimes simpler is better. I'm with Rocco on that. Um, so look, you know, one, one very important point uh, that I want to make about PDF packages is, is that they are not limited to uh, connecting and, and, and including just other PDF files, right? And people tend to think of that as well, right? The truth is you can load any kind of file that you need to into the PDF package, whether it's, you know, drawing files or Word documents or Excel workbooks, anything that you need. Um, this PDF package is going to, it's going to function exactly like any other type of file storage system, right? It's just that it's com a compressed PDF instead of a zip or a hyperlink onto your server. Um, the other component uh, that I want to touch base on is that, you know, all of these folders and files, right, that you put into this PDF, they can be opened and accessed and launched and the files can be edited just by clicking on them inside of this PDF, right? There is no need to, you know, extract them out to a local drive like you would with a zip file, right? And then you have to worry about, well, if I made changes, how do I repackage them or how do I upload them back up or do I got to create a new PDF package? You know, one of the, the things that I like best about this PDF uh, package process, it's that your, your package can be hosted out on a neutral cloud site, right? And, and what this means is that anyone you want can then go in, open the package, and then they can individually open, edit, markup, review, comment on, change, or whatever else you need people to do directly on those files inside this one PDF, right? The edits, the changes, they're all saved right back inside the package. So there's never a need to worry about, you know, oh, where am I going to save this? How am I going to store that? How am I going to get back to the original senders, right? The, the, and, and this can be a really, really amazing way to set up a very simple 
uh, collaboration functionality, right? With people outside of your company or outside of your office where everything is being stored in one consistent location, essentially one file. Um, and look, here's the other thing. The other cool thing about this is that you don't even need Bluebeam, right? Anybody who opens up the PDF package in another system, you know, like Adobe Acrobat or Nitro Pro, they can still open and access and edit those files. I, uh, and, and even better, if they do have Bluebeam, which like I said, most of us do, um, they're going to be able to add new files and create new folders at will, right? Making it just this perfect ideal sharing environment. Um, so Rocco, you know, to put it in perspective, right? Just in, in terms of scope, how many of our clients you know, both either have or work with Bluebeam versus how many of our clients are using another PDF editor like Pro or Nitro? Oh, just... I'd say probably 90% of people that we work with are using uh, Bluebeam. Uh, Adobe, you know, does come up. Uh, Nitro is not mm, very, uh, very few people use Nitro. <laughs> you hear some scary stories about Nitro. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Bluebeam is, you know, and, and that's part of why we do what we do, right? Day in and day out, train and consult and you know, um, help people build tool sets and, you know, project setup services and so on around Bluebeam. It's, we, we live and breathe it. There you go. All right. So with that, I tell you what, let's take a quick break uh, to let our sponsors have a word here today. And when we get back, I want to get into the actual process, right? For how do you structure and put together a PDF package, right? So stand around folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. The sponsor for today's episode of the Cattle Call Podcast is Matterport. Now, you guys know Matterport. They've been all over the world. We see them all the time getting, you know, 3D laser scans and photogrammetric uh, digital twins uh, you know, for all of our real estate development houses and all of that great stuff we see out there. But what I really want you guys to understand about Matterport is that it does so much more than just those static models. One of the really amazing things that you can do with Matterport is you can integrate links and hyperlinks to dashboards and controls. We can link to videos. We can link to warranty information, manufacturing information. Think of it like this. If you could go into a digital twin model, have your clients and, and your coworkers walk through it, pick a piece of equipment, click on it, and get all the information on the make, the model, the manufacturer, when it was last updated, uh, You know how much does it cost, how do I order a new one, anything that you could conceive of, whether it's in a manufacturing space, a facility management system, or on the construction job site. We can do all of that and so much more in Matterport. It's not just 3D scanning, it's a lot more. So Rocco, why don't you tell these folks how we work with Matterport and how they can reach out to find more? Yeah, whether it's the integration with uh, with Bluebeam, products like Bluebeam or Procore um, or, or even Adobe, um, we can help you uh, from the consulting standpoint. If you're looking for help on the scanning end, we can help. If you're looking to buy the cameras, we can help. So feel free to reach out to us. Our website is zentechconsultants.net. Uh, give us a ring, 866-824-4459 or drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. There you go, folks. Matterport, so much more than you ever thought it was and sponsoring the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. Um, and again, we're talking about Bluebeam features that you need in your life. Um, and today we're focusing on PDF packages. Um, and in, in the top half of the show, I covered what these can do and, and how they could benefit you. And in this half of the podcast, uh, I want to walk you through the process of using, you know, the most common PDF package tools and features. Um, and, and, you know, remember that this PDF package tool, it's available in all versions of Bluebeam. So everybody who's listening can use these processes, right? There's no extra fees, no purchases, no apps to install, none of that involved. Um, so, so, Let's start with the process of adding folders, all right? Because this is probably the most common function that you guys are going to use, um, and, and you're going to want to get very comfortable with it. Uh, look, you know, when you open up a new PDF package, you're immediately going to have, it's going to create a new PDF right in Bluebeam, and you're going to have three buttons that are automatically embedded at the top of the initial page, and those are add files, add folder, and new folder. Um, 
the add folder button, it, it lets you browse out to any folder location. Doesn't matter where, on your local drive, on your server, or on the cloud, doesn't matter. Um, you browse out to where your files are stored and you just select a folder to import all the files within that folder into your PDF package. All right, so, and, and, and let, let me kind of be really clear about how easy this is. So if you browse out to a folder on your server and it's called project one, two, three, right? And project one, two, three has 30 subfolders and each of those subfolders has 10 more subfolders. And then every subfolder has hundreds of files. That's a lot of data, right? You only have to select the top level project one, two, three folder and Bluebeam is going to recreate that exact folder structure with all the files, all the subfolders, sub, sub, subfolders, all directly right inside of the PDF, right? One click and you can just upload entire projects accurately named, structured and ready for distribution to all your subcontractors. Or, or even if you wanna take that and use it as a central location in one file for you know, your whole construction management system, right? What, whatever you guys need here. Um, and, and Bluebeam is even going to create, you know, what, what we call a, a cookie crumb header. Um, if you guys ever seen that, you know, it's like in your URL where you can click to go back a level. It gives you the name of each folder and subfolder. You can click on each one to jump back. It's going to put that right at the top of the page. It lets you, you know, move up and down on the folder names so you can navigate back and forth to the files or folders or whatever that you want to work with. Um, so, all right, Rocco, let me, let me ask you about this, right? What would you think? about using something like this internally, right? Say if we wanted to you know, put all our estimates and statements of work and reference files, and maybe even some marketing materials into a single PDF that we could send out to clients, right? Um, and, and do you think that these content or these concepts rather would you know, adapt well to our clients who are working in the design build space? Well, I, I'm, you'd say cookie crumb. I'm just thinking about cookies. Cookies. <laughs> oh, me love cookie. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm in my impression mode today. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I, I, it's, um, you know, again, it's about, it's about organization and, and that, whether it's at the administrative level or, you know, collaboration level, it, it, it's about organization and being more efficient. And it only, it only makes sense to, you know, to, to deploy this kind of technology. I mean, especially if you, if you own Bluebeam, you, you have it at your fingertips, right? It's, it's available with all levels of Bluebeam. Yep. Yeah. So, so cool. why not? So there you go. So I'm going to hold you that on the next job. We're going to use this on your next bid. Uh, all right. So, the next feature that I want to talk about then is, is the new folder button, right? So we talked about the add folder, now we're talking about the new folder. Um, and, and once again, that's going to appear automatically at the top of every PDF package that you create, right? So you guys don't have to worry about, you know, oh, where do I find it? Or what software process do I have to learn to do that? It doesn't, they're all going to be at the top. Um, and, and the new folder tool does exactly what it says. It lets you build right? Entire folder and subfolder structures right inside the PDF package that may not correspond to the folder structure uh, that you get by, you know, loading our, our project one, two, three, right? Um, you know, and, and in truth, you, you really, you don't even need to load an existing folder at all. You can go in here into the PDF package and you can manually build a folder structure right from scratch, you know? Um, you know, use nothing but this new folder tool. It lets you go in and, and you know, it add folders and subfolders one at a time. So, and I think this feature, it's, to my mind anyway, it's great for adding things like, you know, a markups folder or a photos folder or an issue tracking subfolder for your field guys. Um, you know, basically anyone who's accessing the, the, the PDF package via Bluebeam can structure things as they need it to be. Right, you know, so you, you want to go in, you want to create, hey, here's an outdated revisions folder or a current billings folder within this space and, and never have to worry about, you know, having IT, you know, set permissions and so on for, you know, everybody involved, right? You can just, you know, handle it all right out in the field without any headaches, right? And, and, and once you create any new folder, right, you can just click inside of that and create new subfolders and then you click into those and so on to build any structure that you need. Um, 
And and I will say, you know, the, the other thing is, you know, the, the new folder tool can be used after v, you've used the add folder tool as well, right? So if, if we did upload our example project, our project one, two, three, we were talking about, um, and then you go, oh, you know what? I want to add a folder for field notes or, you know, whatever else. The new folder tool will work exactly the same way there, right? It's really, it's no different than creating, you know, new folders the way that you do today in your Windows Explorer program. It's just going to exist. Those folders will exist inside the PDF instead of on your server or on your hard drive. Okay, that's the only yeah, real I, difference. I know we kind of talk, talked about this before, but the the file size and and the capability to to suppress still is is kind of I, I, I'm like thinking this has got to be big still they got to be big files they, I mean, they can be, yeah I mean it can only go so far with compression that's why I say you know it, it's really not something that you're gonna want to email you know if you're putting a, it's great for if, if you're dealing with like PDFs and markups and word documents and contracts those are very small files if you're dealing with, you know, design files, God forbid, Revit files, things that like you can put them in here. Um, yeah. But if you're going to do that, then you're, yeah, you're absolutely right, Rocker. You're going to want to put those on a centralized location. But it makes it real easy to say, hey, I'm putting this on Dropbox. And everybody's just going to work through there. I put everything in one setup. It's a snapshot of the job. That's where we're going to work from the field. You don't have to worry about, oh, these files are on our server. Those files are in Dropbox. These files are on the architects that, you know. It eliminates all of that, but yeah, you're 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 gonna have to keep an eye on file size. It's a very good point. So, all right, since you're chiming in here, let me ask you a question then. Okay, so you know how often does it come up um, in in conversation, right? Talking about you know sharing files with like you know subs and field people. Um, how long? How often does that come up, right? With clients who want to share this data with those folks in the field, and those folks in the field they either don't know how to. Or, you know, maybe they, they just don't want them to actually access, you know, secure servers and so on. Is that is that as much of a problem as they think it is? It, it is, and particularly with with field people, right? I mean, again, you want a quick and simple, easy way to um, to, to be able to get data out to, out to them and for them to access it. Um, so it's these kinds of conversations we have often with our customers. Um, all right, and so nobody the, wants to deal with the with the you know with the IT codes. And yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to get a, a two-factor authentication and a ninety-five digit code with no letters, no numbers, or extra characters in. They have to be invisible, <laughs> mind melded guys. Like, Good, you guys need to stop. <laughs> it's insane <laughs> nowadays. Oh uh, goodness, uh, you hit my pet peeve. Rocco knows he hears this all the time from me. I hate those <laughs> things. All right, so let's get back to this. So, so the last tool that I, that I really want to talk about here is the add files tool. Um, and it is exactly what you think it is, right? Once you have either, you know, uploaded or created your folder structure, right, you're going to want the ability to add specific files to those locations inside your PDF package, right? So in other words, if you made a photos folder, you're going to want to upload the pictures from your tablet right into that folder, right? And that's what the add files does. Right, you just click on that button, right? And and it brings up the the standard Windows Explorer, you know, browse for files dialog that we've all used for decades in every program out there. There's nothing new to learn here. Um, and you can browse out to any location, any device, and and pick a file. Or you and just like you normally can, you can use the control and shift keys to do you know, select multiple files at once. And then you can upload them into the current folder inside your PDF package. Right. So you guys kind of see the simplicity here and what I'm saying, there is like no learning process here. It is just like working with any other file or folder process you've ever seen. Right. You just need to, to kind of, I guess, wrap your brain uh, around the end product being fully contained inside of one PDF file. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, once you've gotten all your files and your folders loaded, right, you can just double click on any of those files to just open and edit and edit, excuse me, any of them, um, you know, and it's going to use whatever natively installed program you have for that type of file. You click on a Word document, it's going to launch it in Word. You click on, you know, a drawing, it'll open it in AutoCAD or BricsCAD or whatever. Um, it will let you, you know, you can move and cut and copy files and rename the files with a, a right click, just like you would in a normal Windows Explorer environment. You can even do a save as right from the PDF 
package without even having to open the file, right? So if you say, hey, I need to you know, save a copy of that outside of the file to send to somebody else, you just right click, do a save as, save it outside the PDF package, okay? You can go in with that right click and you can add, I like this one a lot actually, you can add descriptions for every file. So if you wanna go and say, hey, this is you know revision one, uh, submittal two, dated such and such a date, that you can put in, right, with a simple right click and that's gonna show on the main file page. So it gives you the ability to tell people exactly what is in each file, even before they open it. So they can just look at it and know, oh, this is the one I was looking for. That's the right date. That's the right time. That's the right revision. Um, and, and the PDF package even lets you, believe it or not, you it's got column data, right? Just like you in Windows Explorer. So you can sort by name, by date, by file size, just like you do in Windows Explorer, just right inside the PDF. Um, so... Look, I'll, I'll wrap this whole thing up by saying that the PDF package, it may not meet every single file sharing or, or file control scenario that you run into, particularly because it, it, like Rocco pointed out, the size can get big. Um, but I will say this, I think it's a really versatile tool uh, that in some instances is brilliant. Um, and it's something I think that you guys should definitely keep in your back pocket and that everybody listening should spend a few minutes getting comfortable with. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to throw in there, Rocco? I just think you used the word brilliant way too many times. Well, I'm on the line. We must. Brilliant is as brilliant does. And with that, we're out of here and we'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net, or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.